A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Wait, really? Those apostles? The ones that not too long ago abandoned Jesus after his arrest in the garden? The ones that were led by a guy that denied knowing Jesus three times after he was arrested? The ones that left Jesus to die on the cross alone, except for a few women and the beloved disciple? Those are the people that are with great power, bearing witness to the resurrection? Yes. Yes, they are. What happened to them? What happened to the Peter that rashly said he would never deny Jesus? What happened to James and John, who asked for seats at Jesus' left and his right in his kingdom? What happened to all the others that became angry at this request? What happened to the general cluelessness that defined the apostles throughout the Gospels that so often caused Jesus to exasperately say, O you of little faith? Well, two things happened to them. First, they saw and they encountered the risen Lord. And second, they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Through these events, the flawed apostles have been transformed and they've been made new. Their cowardice has given way to hope, their unbelief to faith, and their selfishness to love. They are now ready to be what Christ had called them to be, to be fishers of men, to be true apostles. Now, when Dominic was alive, he was inspired by the apostolic life, the life of a poor preacher of the good news, whose life was entirely given over to God. And this is the life that all of us have chosen. I'm sure all of us want to, with great power, bear witness to the resurrection of Jesus. If we want to be this and to do this, I think there is no greater group of people to look to for inspiration than these first followers of Christ. All during this octave of Easter, we have heard the stories of the first appearances of Jesus to his apostles after the resurrection. Early in the week, we heard of Mary Magdalene and her encounter at the empty tomb, where she sees Jesus, but recognizes him when he calls her by her name. Then, in the middle of the week, we hear the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, where Jesus reveals himself only through the scriptures, and then ultimately in the breaking of the bread. Now, after this, the two travelers who had seemed very interested in staying in Emmaus immediately race back to Jerusalem to tell the others. And then at the end of the week, we hear the story of Peter and the others in the boat fishing, going back to their old way of life when they see Jesus on the shore and go back to meet him. And in this, Jesus gives Peter the chance to reaffirm the love that he has for Christ and to move past his denials. All of these moments show us that the change that happens in our life happens when we have a real encounter with the risen Jesus. But the apostles aren't just changed. They're also moved to action by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Acts of the Apostles, we see many examples of this. There's the story of Peter being led by the Spirit to preach the gospel to the Gentile Cornelius and his family. Later, Philip is moved to preach to the Ethiopian eunuch. And most dramatically of all is Paul's preaching of the good news throughout all of the Roman world. All of this is the work of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. This is the life of an apostle, 
This is our life, the life we have chosen. I think it is good for us to meditate on how we ourselves have been transformed by our own encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ. Do we live as people who know Jesus both in our hearts and in our minds? Do we show the world the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Are we people of the resurrection who can show people the love that God has for them? Yeah.